Hello everyone, Abdul Rashid Jahaya here, and welcome to another episode of Esports Academy. I'm an esports educator, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and content creator. And I've been brought here proudly by the Mid-Continent Public Library, Level Up Arena, Unified, and the Varsity Esports Foundation to provide esports instructional videos to show you how to go from amateur all the way to pro, whether you're in the competition side or the professional side within the esports industry. But today's lesson is about router basics. At some point in your gaming career, you're all going to yell out, why is my game lagging? Or darn it, my game is, is actually lagging. So we're going to explain th different things that you can do to avoid that issue, but also what to do when you actually get it. Because it's, mo it's more than just lag. I know that's very common in gaming uh, talk right now, but it's more than just lag. But we're going to explain that in three videos. The first video is going to explain how much internet is actually needed. The second video is what are optimal settings for your internet router. And the last video is going to explain what latency actually is and how it affects your gameplay. So stay tuned. We're going to go into our first instructional video to explain to you how much internet is actually needed. These days, your options for high-speed internet start at just a few megabits per second and go all the way up to gigabit speeds or even more. Now, of course, the ISPs want you to fork over as much of your money as possible for a higher speed connection with vague wording about how it's good for gaming or multiple devices or what have you. But how much should you really be paying for? Well, here's the thing. Part of the reason that internet service providers offer so many access tiers is that not everyone needs the same sized pipe coming into their home. You shouldn't buy a 10-seat minivan if you're single with no kids, and in much the same way, it's probably a waste to have an insanely fast internet connection if you live alone with one computer and a phone. This means the $64,000 question when choosing an internet plan is, what are you using the service for, and how many gadgets will be accessing it at once? After that, the process mostly becomes a matter of simple addition. You see, it turns out that predicting how much speed each common task requires is fairly straightforward. Suppose you want to stream HD video, and I would assume you do, otherwise you probably wouldn't be watching this. For sites like YouTube and Netflix, you'll need between a 5 and 10 megabit per second connection if you want your experience to be reliably smooth. Now, of course, if you want to stream 4K or HDR, your data rates are going to be quite a bit higher. Most of the popular streaming platforms recommend anywhere from 15 to 25 megabit per second, and we would suggest going a fair bit higher than that, somewhere in the 40 to 50 megabit range. This will account for any dips in your service speed during heavy load times, or if a Windows update is running in the background somewhere. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that this is on a per video basis. So, if you wanted to stream on more than one screen, you need to multiply that speed times the total number of videos that you foresee your household playing on your connection at once. That way, your TechQuickie stream won't cut out because your inconsiderate roommate is trying to watch his rebooted 90s sitcoms in 4K. Next, we've got to consider our other data-heavy doings besides streaming video, like gaming. It might surprise you, though, to know that you don't need insane speeds to have a great gaming experience. In fact, typically, if you can have at least 10 megabits per second free on whatever device you're gaming on, it'll probably be enough. The more important consideration for gaming is going to be latency. Now, you can learn more about latency up here, but in short, it's the delay between your computer or your phone requesting something from the server and the server sending the data back to you and vice versa. And it's actually possible, nay common, to have a service that boasts high speeds, but also suffers from high latency, which can result in weird, leggy behavior while you're gaming. And the really tricky thing here is that as you pay more for a higher speed tier, your latency may not improve at all. So if you have several ISPs to choose from, read reviews, and see if there are any in your area where gamers have specifically recommended it for its lower latency. Also keep in mind that low latency is equally important for other real-time applications, such as video chatting with your long-distance love interest. One more gaming and video chat specific consideration is that unlike web browsing, it's important to make sure that you're getting a decent amount of upstream speed for these applications. 
a solid 10 to 15 megabits per second per device should be fine for high quality video calls and streaming to Twitch in high definition. Now, aside from applications, the other most common reason that you might want a faster connection is if you are often transferring large files like game installers or large video files. For example, if you were trying to download a two gigabyte movie, that would take about two minutes and 40 seconds on a 100 megabit per second connection. So it's a simple matter of doing the math for how long it takes you to prepare a bucket of popcorn and going from there. Finally, although I know the title of this episode is how much speed you need, we should probably also mention data caps. Those are those nasty little limits that some ISPs slap onto your service, where if you exceed a certain amount per month, you'll be looking at consequences like throttling or extra charges. Now data caps shouldn't be too much of a concern for web browsing, but you can quickly run up against them if you're gaming, streaming, or watching a ton of video. So have a look at this chart to see how much data per hour these activities usually consume, and then you can use some quick math to see how high of a cap you might need every month. The bottom line is that there's no point overpaying for either speed or data. That is, unless you're that person that likes to leave your Wi-Fi unsecured because you're just feeling really generous towards your whole neighborhood. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Speaking of helpful, Brilliant is all about helping you get just a little bit smarter every day. They publish several daily challenges that provide a quick and fascinating view into math, logic, science, engineering, or computer science. And it's daily, that means every day. So whether you're stuck in a commute or just wanna learn something new, Brilliant's daily challenges are a fun, bite-sized way to master concepts by applying them. Each challenge comes with illustrations, animations, or interactive visualizations, and includes all the context that you need to solve it for yourself. So if you want to actively learn new, fascinating concepts each day, head over to brilliant.org slash techwiki. We're gonna have that link below and finish your day a fair bit smarter. See, my talking points say a little bit, but you also watched TechWiki, so you get extra credit for that. The first 200 of you to do so are gonna get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription, so you can view all of the daily challenges in the archives and unlock their dozens of problem-solving courses. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future fastest possible video, and don't forget to check out our other videos so you don't miss any of our other videos. And subscribe and hit the bell because it's important, you know. Hey everyone, welcome back. Now that we have a, a solid for foundation and knowledge as, uh, about how much internet we actually need, we can stop yelling. We need to increase our, our internet for our house or our office. We want to start with that video because in the next video, we're going to go over how to set your internet router for optimal settings for video games. Um, I know in your home or in your office, there's, there's probably plenty of devices that are pulling from your internet, but there are different things that you can do with your, with your home internet router so that you can optimize your gameplay um, to, give the, to have the best experience for yourself. Um, of course, that's going to be on the Wi-Fi side as well as on the tethered side. Um, on having a tethered connection to your, to your console or your PC is always going to be the best environment, but if you do not have access to a ethernet cable to plug your console or PC directly into your, to your router or modem, there are some ch settings you can change so that your Wi-Fi experience is equally as great. So stay tuned. This next video is going to be on, on optimal settings for your internet router and modem. Welcome everyone to another video. I hope that all of you are doing amazing this evening. It is currently December and it's a Tuesday. Unfortunately, I'm coming down with a bit of a cold. So I do apologize if my voice sounds just a little bit different than it normally does. But nevertheless, today I'm going to be showing you guys some of the settings on your home network router that you should think about changing if you play online multiplayer games. And when I say online multiplayer games, I'm talking about games such as Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Battlefield 5, CSGO, um, Rainbow Six Siege, really any online competitive multiplayer game that relies on real-time interaction. I'm sure that most of you watching, even if you've never experimented with these types of things before, probably know that if you do optimize and fine tune certain settings on your router, you can actually achieve a better multiplayer connection to the game that you're playing. For instance, you can often achieve a lower ping to the server. 
You can experience fewer frame drops and smoother frame rate when playing multiplayer. You can have fewer disconnects from the server and really just a overall better experience. And yes, firmware settings on your home router are really only one piece to the puzzle uh, when it comes to determining how good your connection is to the server. Um, that overall connection quality, I guess I should call it, is determined by so many pieces to the puzzle from firmware settings to how your network hardware is set up to who your ISP is, what type of internet is it? Is it DSL, fiber, cable? Are you using a wireless mobile hotspot? Um, how, how far away do you actually live from the server? Um, how does your ISP route traffic? I mean, there's so many different factors that determine how good your connection is for multiplayer games. So the reason I'm explaining all this is because I want this to be an introductory video. I've never actually done a beginner's guide or introductory video uh, to hardware and firmware optimization for gaming. And the purpose of this video is to give beginners, I guess, a place to start in what to look for, what to like think about changing, where to where to start and what to avoid, um, what not to waste your time on, I guess, if that makes any sense. Because there's a lot of noise um, about these settings and misleading things, I feel like, about uh, certain settings that really actually do not make a difference, and I don't want people to waste their time on those things. I know that this has been a long preface and premise to this video, but I do want to disclose those things to you all for those that are beginners. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm using my Netgear R7000. This is a very popular router. Um, this is a router that a lot of my viewers uh, do have, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to use it. So we are currently in the advanced setup, and we're going to start here at the beginning. As you can see, uh, with the beginning um, internet setup, we have internet IP addresses. Usually, you do not want to mess with this. If you have DSL, broadband, or fiber, usually uh, your internet service provider will provide you dynamically with an, a dedicated WAN IP address. So you really do not need to mess with these settings here. Now, DNS servers, uh, I guess this is where it kind of begins. Um, one of the easiest things that you can do to start fine-tuning and optimizing your connection is to um, check DNS servers in your area that offer um, faster uh, name resolution, I guess is the easiest way to put it. And a software that I recommend that you can download onto your computer is a program that is free called DNS Benchmark. Um, you can use it to look up DNS servers and find the ones that are the fastest for your area. I only recommend using DNS servers that are major, uh, well-known DNS servers, such as Google DNS, OpenDNS, Cloudflare, Quad9, the really well-known ones, and to avoid smaller, less known uh, DNSs because the reliability of those DNS servers is often undetermined. I only recommend sticking with the well-known ones. So if you are lucky enough to be able to change your DNS servers, I do recommend it and find which ones are the fastest for you using a DNS benchmark software. Now, some internet providers will not let you change DNS servers, so you will be kind of stuck with it. Um, for me, I have AT&T Fiber and they force you to use AT&T's DNS servers unless you do some sort of bridged connection on a separate router. Okay. So um, really, DNS servers is the place to start if you're interested in uh, the first step to optimizing your internet connection for gaming. No DNS servers will not give you a lower ping in multiplayer games, but you can oftentimes achieve faster network speeds. And from my experiments, I've seen faster downloads on my game consoles when changing DNS servers. And I've tested those things pretty extensively. Um, with downloading games as you all have seen on previous videos and there is a connection and a correlation between dns servers and how fast games download it seems like so yeah that's where i recommend you start dns servers wireless uh setup hold on let me go ahead and type this in real quick so let's talk about wireless internet setup for multiplayer games i typically do not condone using wireless network for multiplayer games or gaming on Wi-Fi because those types of connections are generally less reliable than a LAN connection. Um, there's just so many factors that determine 
you know, how good your wireless connection is that I'd rather not mess with it. And if you can utilize a LAN cable at all times, 100%. But if you are forced to use Wi-Fi for gaming, I recommend using a five gigahertz Wi-Fi band. And the reason I say that is because that'll generally offer you the fastest connection for the Xbox One X, the Xbox One S, and the PS4 Pro, which is five gigahertz compatible. And really any gaming computer that is modern will have a Wi-Fi card uh, that is built for five gigahertz Wi-Fi. So the only downside of five gigahertz is, is, is not is um, the range is not as good as a 2.4 gigahertz band. So um, 2.4 gigahertz will be for long range and five gigahertz will really be for speed. Um, so you will have to be closer to the router to use and effectively obtain the best performance for five gigahertz. Uh, as far as like settings for these actual bands, I don't really recommend changing with like changing them or, um, you know, changing the channels. I, I let the router do the work with this because most modern routers are smart enough to determine the best optimal settings and the best conditions um, for uh, Wi-Fi performance. So I typically leave these alone. All right, we're moving on to WAN setup. This is how your router is communicating with the wide area network or um, really the open internet. So let's talk about firewalls. I don't necessarily recommend disabling the firewall for your router unless you are troubleshooting and trying to resolve NAT type issues. For instance, um, features like uh, DOS protection and port scan, I leave this enabled. Um, just because I want to make sure that my home network is uh, having some sort of firewall protection from my router. DMZ server, I do not recommend putting your console, especially your PC, in the DMZ. The only time I recommend it is if you are at a last ditch effort or really at your wits end of trying to obtain an open NAT type for multiplayer games. That is the only time I recommend uh, utilizing the DMZ server is really just for troubleshooting. Um, Respond to ping on internet port. This is, from what I know, this is kind of unique to Netgear. I'm sure that um, other routers have this feature as well, but this is really, if you don't know what it is, I don't recommend messing with it. I recommend just leaving it at the default setting. Um, IMGP proxying, I believe this has to do with multicast traffic, so I just leave this uh, by disabled. MTU, uh, there's a lot of noise and talk about optimizing and changing MTU settings and uh, the debate is really still in the air if it actually improves multiplayer connection. I can genuinely say confidently, I do not think that lowering MTU gives you a lower ping to in like multiplayer games or lower ping to a server. I really truly don't believe that. I don't think there's any evidence that supports it. If any of you all watching this video uh, know of any evidence or any reasoning behind that, you can comment below. Um, one thing that I have heard that is rather plausible is that lowering MTU can oftentimes lower the chances of disconnects to the multiplayer server that you're playing on. I have heard that a numerous amount of times that those that receive constant disconnects from the multiplayer server, just by lowering the MTU, they were able to um, achieve fewer disconnects from that server. I have made a video in the past on how to fine tune and optimize MTU on the PS4. And if you do want to check that out, I will have it linked in the description box below where you can check it out. As far as changing and lowering and optimizing MTU, I recommend that you do it on the actual console or device that you are playing on. I don't necessarily recommend tuning or changing it within the router. All right. NAT filtering. This is essentially our firewall. Um, so I genuinely recommend leaving this at secured, not necessarily open. Open will just give you a less secure firewall um, for your home network. So I recommend leaving it at secured at the default setting. SIP ALG, again, this is one of these settings. If you don't know what it does, I recommend just leaving it um, by default setting. This has to do with VOIP, so don't need to mess with that. Moving along to LAN setup, TCP IP setup. Uh, this is the uh, range and the, the pool for the IP. I don't necessarily need to mess around with this. Uh, use a router as a DHCP server. Yes, we are doing that. And uh, this is the IP address range for how DHCP assigns uh, IP addresses to your devices. We can set a static IP address to any of our devices on our home network. This is where we would do that. We can add a... Um, 
a device to the um, static routes, as you all can see. Move along, QoS setup. Uh, QoS, in my opinion, is by far the best thing that you can fine tune and enable to obtain a better multiplayer connection. If you do this correctly, you will not negatively affect anybody else in your home or any other device um, in your home network. So I always recommend if you do play multiplayer games to enable QoS. And if you are going to use QoS, I always recommend using uh, advanced setup. I do not recommend these automatic QoS configurations or dynamic QoS as Netgear calls it. It gives you absolutely no control over what you're doing. If you're gonna use QoS, um, we're gonna set our uplink bandwidth to about 70% of what it normally is. So what you would do is go and do a speed test on either Ookla speed test or some routers have a speed test function within the firmware and you would set this to approximately about 70%. All right, so for instance, if I have a thousand megabits per second upload, I would set this to maybe around 700 megabits per second or 600 if I wanted to be really aggressive with it. A uh, quick tip with this as well, I recommend always prioritizing by device. Um, I don't recommend prioritizing by service. Service is only effective and better than device or LAN port in certain scenarios, but generally for most home network connections, you always want to prioritize by device. And what you would do is essentially set your PS4 to the highest priority possible while prioritizing every other device on your home network to the lowest priority. And no, don't worry, this isn't going to mean that everybody else is going to have terrible connection to the internet. What it means is that the smaller packets that the PS4 uses for multiplayer games will always be first in line uh, for your available bandwidth and it won't get hogged up and bloated by the heavier bandwidth users for things like Netflix, Hulu, YouTube streaming, things that use a ton of bandwidth. So since gaming traffic is so small, it really will never negatively affect um, other devices on the home network unless you start like randomly downloading a game where the PS4 effectively starts maxing out your bandwidth. That's the only instance where I think that QoS could negatively affect other users on your home network, at least for gaming. Um, QoS by LAN port. This is helpful if you have a setup where you are using a um, or multiple uh, access points for Wi-Fi. But if you have a router that is both uh, Wi-Fi enabled and um, LAN port enabled, or you have LAN ports, <laughs> then I recommend using QoS by device. WMM setup. This is Wi-Fi QoS. I always recommend leaving this enabled. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that I really need to talk about. USB functions, there's nothing too significant there. Uh, router setup, this has to do with how your uh, router is, um, I guess, behaving within your network setup. I usually leave mine in AP mode, but that's because I use my uh, R7000 as an access point, not necessarily as a router. But for those of you all that are watching that use a uh, router with a standalone modem, you will be using just regular router mode. Port forwarding and port triggering, this is huge. Um, port forwarding is uh, another one of those things that you can utilize to obtain a better connection to the multiplayer server because the ports that are used are how the game server communicates with your uh, LAN network connection and the device that you're playing on. And I always recommend using port forwarding. I'm not a big fan of port triggering. Port forwarding is generally the most effective method for or port utilization on your home network. So really what you would do is you can forward either by IP or by MAC address. And I think the R7000 allows you to do both. And there are a lot of routers that let you do either or. And generally I recommend port forwarding by the MAC address. Uh, that way you do not have to set up a static IP address. But some routers will make you set a static IP address for the device you're using before you start forwarding ports. Either or, uh, regardless of which one you pick, the ports will be forwarded effectively as long as you set either a static IP or choose the correct MAC address. Um, but I recommend MAC address port forwarding because it is generally easier. It removes one step from the equation, which is uh, setting up a static IP. 
Uh, pro tip for using uh, port forwarding is while it is the most effective method of, you know, using ports with multiplayer games, if you're going to use port forwarding, always disable universal plug and play or UPnP. All right, moving along to IPv6. IPv6 is uh, natively supported within the Xbox One S and the Xbox One uh, X, and I also think the original Xbox One. I think the PS4 does use IPv6. I've seen my PlayStation 4 pick up an IPv6 address, but I've never actually seen it um, within the connection status uh, in the dashboard of the PS4 menu. I'm sure that next generation consoles will uh, fully implement IPv6 capability, but I always recommend uh, using either auto detect or auto config for IPv6. Um, aside from that, I think that is pretty much everything to cover for the basics. There's really nothing else that I can think of that you would want to optimize in order to start off with getting a better connection and fine-tuning settings on your router for multiplayer games. So I hope that all of you that were beginners to this type of uh, stuff enjoyed the video. If you do all have any questions, comment down in the comment section below. I do have more detailed videos on my channel as well over all these specific uh, things within the router. So uh, yeah, leave a thumbs up if you thought this video was interesting and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Hey everyone, welcome back. Now that we've gone through and gave you a, a solid knowledge of how much internet you actually need in your house or in your business, and we've also covered how to change the settings in your internet router and modem to give you the most optimal experience, whether you're playing on a, on a ethernet connection or you're playing on Wi-Fi connections. Now we're gonna explain why we're all always saying, why is my game lagging or yelling that our game is actually lagging. Because most of the time, it's more so a latency problem. And the next video that we're going to go through is, is actually going to explain what latency is and how it actually affects your gameplay. We're going through this video because we want, we want you to know this and understand it so that you can make the proper adjustments from the, the previous video to give you the best advantage in your online gameplay. So stay tuned. Here's the next video. Hello. My name is David, and today I will be talking to you about latency and how it affects online gaming. So, what exactly is latency? Well, latency, or ping, is the time it takes for packets of data to get from one destination to another. Latency can be classified as delay, as it takes time for these packets of data to get from one destination to another. Latency can't be confused with FPS, or frames per second, because FPS is a problem with the computer itself. What kind of effect does latency have on online gaming? Well, latency can cause choppiness, jerky movements, can cause gameplay can, to freeze, disconnection, or even rollbacks. L if the latency is really high, it it causes it can cause some of these issues or all of its issues combined. What kind of games does latency have an impact on? Well, latency can affect First-person shooters or FPS, such as Call of Duty and Battlefield, can have an impact on multiplayer online battle arenas or MOBAs, such as League of Legends and Dota 2, can have an effect on real-time strategies or RTSs, such as StarCraft 2 and Total War, or even massively multiplayer online or MMOs, such as World of Warcraft and RuneScape. But latency affects these differently. When you're playing an FPS, such as Call of Duty, you want to have a really low ping because it will reduce these ch the chances of having these effects. And you don't want to have these effects because it will, it will really worsen your gameplay and you don't want that. You want to have nice, crisp, cl clear gameplay. Otherwise, you'll, you won't be able to get the kills you need to win the game. Otherwise, if you're playing World of Warcraft, you're more than likely walking in a straight line or questing or doing something like that. So if you have choppiness or jerky movements, it doesn't really affect your gameplay that much because you're not going out to get kills or you're not trying to take over an enemy's base such as like you do in StarCraft 2. So it doesn't, it 
doesn't have the same effect as it would in other games. So latency affects different styles of games differently. Alright, so in the next clip, I'll be showing you some gameplay of Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And I'll be showing you how it looks in with high ping versus low ping. You, you'll definitely see some difference in the gameplay. Uh, you'll see some choppiness, some freezing, maybe even disconnect if I get lucky. So I'll see you guys then. Alright, so this is the, the low ping clip. Um, I'm running about 60, 60-ish ping. So it's not the worst, but it's not the greatest. As you can see, other people are about 120-ish, which is pretty bad. So, um... It's pretty smooth. I mean, the running is fairly smooth. You can jump around. This is Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Uh, it's, fa it's fairly smooth. Um, in the top right corner, I'm running at about 120 FPS. So that's how you can tell it's not my computer. If there were any problems. So it's fairly good overall. Next, we're going to move on to the high ping clip. As we can see here, the ping for these servers range from 176 to 945 versus the other clip where it's just about 60. So this is crazy. It's crazy high. So if we try to join one, we we might be able to get in. And if we do get in, we, we will experience some choppiness. Our characters might freeze. Uh, we could get disconnected from the server. There could be a whole bunch of different things. So we actually got into the lobby, so that's good. So we could hop in the game and see what happens. Alright, so automatically you see all this, this choppiness. Like, there these characters... These other players are just hopping around the screen. My character is fine, but the other characters are just hopping around the screen. It's just, it's because the ping is so high. Like, mine, it's jumping around from 100, 200, all the way up to 300, which is horrible. So this, is, this just shows the difference between a really low ping versus a really high ping. Awesome, awesome. I hope you guys learned something today in this lesson after we got through covering router basics, going over how much internet is actually needed, how to optimize your internet router and modem for the, for the best setting for a tethered uh, connection as well as a Wi-Fi connection for your gameplay, as well as what, how latency affects your online gameplay. This week, we don't have any homework assi any assignments. I just want you to take the notes that you took from these videos and if you're able to, apply them to your, your own home setup to give you an optimal advantage. Please stay tuned. Next week, we're gonna, next week we're gonna have a great lesson over effective communication within esports and the value of it. I'll see you guys next time. And thanks again to our sponsors, the mid County Public Library, Level Up Arena, the Varsity Sports Foundation, and Unified. Have a good night.